All right, YouTube, grass-fed beef bolognese. Full method is up on IG as well. I'm going to put it here on YouTube as well. Why not? You guys deserve it. Here we go. We got a lot of ground beef here. It was in the freezer. Okay, I'm going to start laying it out. First step is boil out all the water in the meat. Let the meat boil. Cover the bottom with meat. Let it boil and boil and boil. So there's no liquid left. Now it's gonna start boiling, you're gonna see it. We just keep pushing it down and breaking up the raw parts. Breaking the pieces up as small as possible with the wooden spoon. So we can split up these pieces and brown them around each little kernel. See all the water? You can hear it too, you hear it steaming? All the water coming out of the meat. And cooling off the pan. And it's gonna boil. And it's gonna take some time to get heated back up again when all the water's gone. And then it's gonna start frying. You can see it's not sticking, see? Because it's so wet. It doesn't matter if it sticks right now. I'm frying here, boiling. Some of the the sides a little bit, but you can just clean them like this. Just go around with the spoon. Flat bottom wooden spoon, critical for this job, critical. You're lost without it. You are lost, you will not be able to do it. You'll not be able to scrape it. You see the liquid there, you see it? Start adding the butter. Melting it right in on top. We've got a lot of meat here. It has almost no fat. We need a lot of butter. We need more than that. That's good. Now that's going to melt in. Help it start frying. Starting to run out of liquid. And we're going to end up with only fat left. You're going to hear it. It's going to start to fry. It's going to start making loud noise. It's going to start to crackle and pop. See, it's still not see how wet it is. It's still very wet. See what's happening. The edges are getting hotter because the meat is not touching the edges. So the edges are getting very hot. See? So I'm going to Lower the heat just a little bit, or a little too fast. You're gonna hear it, it's already starting to fry. You can hear it, you hear it? Fat now, see? Now it's gonna be fat left over, see? See, that's fat, it's not liquid anymore. Here it goes, you see it, now it's frying. Right. You want to 
heat just a little bit. Slow it down a little bit. Here we go, now it's starting to stick. It's definitely frying, you can hear it. Hear it? it definitely needs a hair more butter in here. This color is scraping. Brian. Lower the heat a little bit. Still scrape. Just scraping, see? See? Scraping. Pile it in the middle, the middle is where the burner is. And all those crunchy bits. What you need. That's what makes it great. See how brown it's getting? Bits, that's what you want. Bits and bits and bits. The more brown bits, the better the bolognese. Cover that again, cover the bottom. That's just the right amount of fat. You can see it's frying very nicely. Spread it back out again. Plenty of fat in the pan to brown it nicely. Zing. Brown is so nice, you know. See how, see that's all fat, see? See it's frying down there? See it's getting browner and browner? See? You see, I'm on a pretty high heat. Not on the highest I have, but I'm on a high heat, so you can see how it's frying perfectly. See very close to look. See how brown it is? Beautiful. Okay, we're there. Now we're gonna get in all the vegetables. The sofrito, onions, carrots. Whoops. One handed here as usual. Celery. Okay, now this is gonna help to the glaze. So you might be saying, that's a lot of butter. No, it's not. This is 90-10 chopped meat, guys. There's almost no fat in this whatsoever. It needed fat to be able to fry, okay? Not a problem. And now adding in all these onions, also it needs fat to fry the onions too. A lot of milk is going in here, a lot of tomato paste. There's gonna be a huge amount of bolognese here. Okay, I'm not making a little bit here, I'm making a lot. You'd be making a lot less than this. I mean, this is basically about five pounds of five pounds of chopped meat, grass-fed chopped meat. 
Don't worry about the fats. Grass-fed fat, you know, raw grass-fed butter, extra virgin olive oil, high in omega-3s, healthiest fat you can have. You got to have 30% fat in your diet anyway. You might as well make it the best fats, okay? And think of it this way. They're healthy fats. So if you have too much fat once in a while of healthy fats, that's not such a big deal. You can see now the sofrito. We're frying the sofrito now. Same process, first the water comes out, then we start to saute it, and then we're gonna deglaze it with white wine. See all that steam is all the liquid that's in the veggies. All the water we already evaporated out of the meat. So that's the steam from the veggies. is delicious as it is right here as is amazing amazing like each kernel is crusted like a brown butter steak you put a little salt and pepper in here maybe some chilies get a little more fat in here and you, and you can make tacos out of this right away boom 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 all right so now we're frying and here we're almost frying again. And that's when we're gonna add in the white wine. As soon as we're frying again. You hear it frying? Fry a little more. I really wanna smell those onions. Hear it, hear it frying? I can smell the onions now. Pretty good. All right, so let's go. We're gonna go with the wine. White wine for bolognese, believe it or not. It's gonna evaporate very quickly. Just like that. That's perfect. I don't like a lot of wine in my bolognese. I'm gonna pull it off the fire. Now I'm gonna add in the milk and the tomato paste. Okay, here we go. Milk. Right. Needs more paste. As always, we go up to the boil and down to a simmer. We're going to change out this pot because it's too wide and it's going to be the evaporation is going to be too fast. We want slow evaporation, so we're going to swap it out. I just want to get up to a boil first to make sure I clean the pot up nice, get all the baked on drippings off, and then I'll swap it out. And there we go. Now I got a nice a thick bottom pot on the flat top where I can very easily control and diffuse the heat. As you wander outside of that circle, it gets much, much milder and I could have a very low simmer. Or you could use a double boiler pot or you could create a diffuser by putting another pot underneath the pot on top of a burner. So you have the burner here, a pot on top of a pot, no water. Or a double boiler, or if you have one of these flat tops, you can move it to the side. Let's try this bolognese. Look at that. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. The flavor's already amazing. It hasn't even cooked yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my God. Delicious. Mm. 
Got the bolognese going. I'm gonna put this on low now. It's definitely going way too high. Just gonna let it keep cooking. Keep stirring. Be careful when you scrape it. Scraping the bottom, sometimes it pops up real fast, especially if you wait a long time, you see? I'm gonna get out some brodo to be able to thin it out when I need to. Let's get this up on the burner. I'm gonna get it up to a boil. Flat bottom spoon. Very important, scrape the bottom. Figure eights inside the thing, figure eights. And just pull it off to the side a little bit, just a little bit, just like that. That should be plenty of heat, nice and slow. Now we keep stirring the bolognese, making sure it's not sticking. Still good now. When it needs some, we'll put some more brodo in there. We'll introduce some brodo actually. The first time we're putting brodo to thin it out if we need to. The idea is not to need to, to just go very slow and evaporate slowly. It's definitely got a little thick. We're gonna thin it out a little bit. We're gonna add a little brodo. Careful, don't add too much, because you can't take it out. You have to keep reducing. So I'm just loosening it up so I can let it go for like another hour or so. Santino's not hungry yet. He's gonna want the bolognese later. And here's the finished product. Hours and hours and hours of simmering, super tender. Look at the consistency. Bolognese method. Now I'm going to chill it down and get it in the fridge. consistency and you'll, you'll remember I put no seasoning in this no herbs in this nothing because I wasn't gonna make any pasta I was making the sauce ahead of time so now when I need the sauce for lasagna or I want to make pasta whatever it is bang boom zing I season it I'm gonna see so I wasn't gonna I made the bolognese and I wasn't gonna have any I wasn't gonna make any pasta with it so there was no point to finish it with herbs and you know all the other seasonings. I just put the cinnamon stick in there because that does take time to extract. But I put nothing else, no salt, no pepper, nothing, because I'll do it when I need it. And that's what we do with sauces. We keep them basic and neutral unless we're gonna finish them and eat them right away. It doesn't make sense. I put this in the fridge and now it's more versatile and the herbs I add to it will be fresh. Okay, when I bring it up right now, because I'm going to make something with it right now, when I bring it up, I'm going to add bay leaves to it. Okay, I'm going to add some black pepper to it. Okay, I might add a little tiny bit of salt to it, not a lot of salt. Okay, but the idea is there's no point because the herbs will, the flavor is kind of fleeting from herbs. And the it's kind of like having a tea when you think about herbs. It's the best way to think about it. Okay, it kind of burns off. So you extract you eat right away, okay, and that's it. You don't count on those herbs. That's why jarred sauces are horrible because the herbs burn off, or a lot of the aromatics burn off, okay, and you know, they just ferment inside the jar. It's really, so always remember that. Don't salt, don't season unless you're finishing it and you wanna eat it right away. 